shit. You can either turn up or tone down. I'm Danny the Machine Morales, and I'm the welterweight combat America's champion, and I'm currently undefeated. I'm gonna be fighting for the lightweight division now. I'm 4-0, and, oh, and I'm gonna be staying undefeated. Danny, como estas? Bien, y tú? I'm really, really excited for you. So tell us a little bit about who you are, a little bit about your background, and how did you get into MMA? Well, um, it's, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to make it short. Um, how I got into MMA, it was pretty much a blessing. Um, I was in a tough time in my life. I was locked up in DOC, and I was, um, I was in there, I liked to draw, so I would always ask my Bible study teacher for a magazine uh, so I could look at the pictures and I could pick whatever, which ones I liked and I'd, I'd draw them. And uh, I seen a National Ge Geographic one that he gave me and it had an article about Brazil MMA. And I seen a guy flying midair about to foot stomp this guy like that was on the floor and I seen the, the picture and I seen the idea and I just got sold by it. And I knew right then and there that's what I wanted to do. And um, like I said, I was getting in trouble. Um, y sé que mi familia, mis padres, vinieron aquí a los Estados Unidos para poder uh, um, uh, provide opportunities for me and my sisters and my siblings, uh, you know, for uh, a better opportunity to to lograr nuestros sueños y, y pues también to create more opportunities for our family, our next generation. You know, that's really what I have on my mind right now, and that's what's driving me to be the best and not just be a champion, but be, be a legend in the sport. So how old were you when you realized that this is what you want to do? I was 17 and, you know, um, I, I was in the juvenile department of corrections and I didn't want to graduate onto the adult and you know like once you go 18 you're you're starting to get charged as an, as an adult and I did I did not want that you know so like MMA just fell on my lap at the right time and I'm very thankful and I've, I've got so far within these seven years I'm 24 now and I'm 4-0 as a pro and you know I, I'm just gonna go as far as I can with it until I can't no more. So how has MMA changed your life? It changed my life. Uh, well, pretty much I was heading in the wrong direction. I was either going to be dead or I was going to be locked up for the rest of my life. And, you know, I was hanging around with the wrong crew. Um, you know, like living in the Chicagoland area, there's a lot of gangs. And unfortunately, I got involved with them. And there's only two options that you're going to end up heading to if you continue with gangs. And that's locked up or dead in a cemetery. And, you know, um, your family ends up suffer suffering more you know, with gang violence and uh, you think it's you that's suffering, but no, it's your family. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I'm where I'm at now. I'm grateful every day, I'm thankful every day, and you know, I'm, I'm just very blessed and there's so much gratitude that I like. So tell us about your dreams. Tell us what is your main goal in um, MMA fighting? Well, my main goal is just to uh, be a be a role model for the next generation of fighters. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, champions out there right now that are not doing the right things for the next generation of fighters. You know, fighters that are partying, fighters that are drinking, fighters that are, that are doing drugs, fighters that are fighting on the street. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to show the next generation that that's what you should be doing. No, you should be living as a professional fighter. Uh, on a daily basis, yeah, you can fight, but that doesn't mean you, you should feel superior to anybody on the street. You should uh, you should be responsible and be disciplined, and, and uh, you know, if anything, spread the knowledge to, to other people to try try to be more positive and spread positive vibes. And that's that's all I'm about. You know? How are you preparing yourself for the next fight? I'm just killing myself every day. Um, that's pretty much what it is here at Izzy Stop Wrestling. We're just evolving every day. There's, um, we're not training easy today to feel good tomorrow. We're training hard each day. We don't care about tomorrow. We're training for the, the, the day of. And um, you know, by the end of the week, we're dead. <laughs> uh, but regardless, each day we're dead and we're just reborn the next day. And I'm just trying to be more, intel more intelligent. I'm trying to be smarter. 
and I'm just trying to keep on doing what my coaches are telling me to do and just, you know, engulf the whole sport itself and just try to be a bold genius, you know, and just be the best I could be. You know, not just in the gym, not just in the ring, but outside on the street, at home, you know, just making it a lifestyle more than anything. Who are you fighting next and when? I'm fighting uh, Steve Cazola from California. He's also undefeated on October 11th at the Sears Center. And there's only going to be one person leaving undefeated, and that's going to be me, the machine, baby. So tell me, what are some of the strengths that you see on your opponent? And how does that compare to what you have to bring uh, to the table? I'm not really focused on um, the strengths of my opponents. I'm just focusing on myself, and that's something that I'm um, going to this new weight class that I've been uh, you know, having fun with. I've just been, more than anything, conquering myself each day. Um, and that's, that's how it should be. You shouldn't be focusing on any, anybody else. Uh, the only person that should, you should be fighting each day is yourself. And that's your only enemy and that's your only opponent that's going to be able to beat you. What message do you have for young Latinos? Specifically for those that are into gangs and possibly trying drugs. What's your message to them? Pues, para todos los latinos, ya saben que tus padres vinieron aquí por una razón y para poder uh, darles la oportunidad a ustedes y tus hermanos y, y todos los niños latinos para poder lograr los sueños que, que no tenían allá en México. Vinieron acá para, para poder darte una oportunidad que, que ellos no tenían y pues tienes que aprovechar eso. Están en la calle haciendo drogas, tomando, todo eso no sirve para nada. Tienes que invertir en algo para el futuro, para tus niños, para tu familia, porque ellos te están ayudando y, y más de nada ellos son los que están sufriendo. So, por favor, piensa en el futuro de tú y tu familia, más de tu familia, porque ellos sufren más. Y yo sé, porque yo, yo, I, I made my family suffer a lot, and you know, that's why every day I'm in the gym, and I'm, I'm hard, I'm working hard every day, and you know, like I, I feel their pain, and it just, sometimes I want to cry just from all the pain that I put them through, and you know, that's why I'm here every day killing myself to be the best, and to be the greatest, and to be a legend. Well, as you can see, and I can just feel his heart, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. I've seen some of your videos, and uh, you have a bright, promising future. Thank you. So you better give us a good name out there. No doubt. And he's going to destroy it. Again, when? October 11th at the Sears Center. Team Machine Morales, baby. And if you need tickets, go on to machinemorales.com. I have the best seats on there. Make sure you get them. See you guys there. You know, también para mí? Oh, sí, claro. <laughs> Muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros esta noche. Thank you. Suerte. Gracias. Y adelante, sigue adelante. Que nadie abajo.